Oh boy, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. I'm your host, Kevin, and currently I'm in Palmdale, California. Now, I flew out here to help Donut Media with a project they're working on. And of course, if you come out to California, you can't just go home empty handed because everything out here is so solid. With that being said, I'd like to introduce you to the 1970 country sedan that we're going to try to drive all the way home to Iowa with no reverse. This is going to be a fun one. For those of you who are familiar with the channel, you know that a year ago, Mook and I flew out to LA to help Nolan from Donut Media on his 52 Imperial and shot a revival video of getting it running for the first time in a number of years. That video was a ton of fun to shoot and it did really good on YouTube. So a year later when Donut Media calls me up once again for a shoot on one of their own videos this time, I don't hesitate at all. The plan is simple. I'll help them for a week, get back on a plane, and fly back to Iowa. And this seems like a perfect plan, but there's two problems. One, I don't have any transportation while I'm in LA, and two, I won't be filming a video while I'm there, and I have to put something out in December. Of course, me being me, I see an easy solution, and I hop on Facebook Marketplace, which is where I find the 1970 Country Sedan. To say I was taking a risk with this one would be an understatement. According to the ad, at a 351 Windsor with an FMX, no dents, brand new tires, and low miles. It also had one little last minute mention about there being no reverse. The person who made the listing was actually selling it for someone else, so he didn't have a ton of info on the car, and to say the least, the pictures weren't very helpful either. This thing was a complete shot in the dark, but from what I could see, it looked like it might be a pretty decent car. Eventually, it came to a decision-making point. Do I risk it all and drive this thing 1,800 miles home, or do I have Donut give me a return flight and get back in time for Christmas? No problem. I offered the guy three grand for the car just to see what would happen, and he hit me back at 3,300. Next thing I knew, I was on a one-way Uber ride driving a Tesla through the mud out in Palmdale, California. Right now, we're surrounded by a, a number of old wagons. We got this old Dodge here. But the one I'm here for, the one that caught my eye on Marketplace, is this 1970 Country Sedan. Now I'm still waiting on the guy to get here with the keys, but I have sat in this thing, checked it out. It is super comfortable, which is exactly what I want if I'm driving 1,800 miles home to Iowa. There is a bunch of stuff in the back that hopefully they clean some out, we'll see. We got a little bit of rust down in this corner, a little bit right here in the roof line. But other than that, it looks to be in really good shape. Coming up front. We have what I believe to be a 351 Windsor, 351 cubic inch Windsor. That is exactly what I want to see. We've got a lot of parts for that. Behind it is a three speed FMX. That is something I'm not very familiar with. And supposedly the only issue with this car, no reverse, like I mentioned. I still haven't heard this run. Supposedly it does run and drive and they said it'll get me to LA no problem, which is about an hour and 20 from where I am right now. So there's step one, wait for the guy to get here with the keys, hear it run, make a final decision on buying it, and then drive it straight to LA to Donut Media. Why do I do this? <laughs> Two hours later, the guy finally showed up with the keys and while they were digging for the title, I gotta hear the car run for the first time. A couple more pumps. some heavier oil in there. And I have to drive through LA traffic with this. And there's no power steering. Usually I would take more time and fix all this, as you guys know, but that guy was two hours late, which makes me an hour and a half late for being at Donut Media. I was supposed to be there at noon today to help them. But it's already 12.30 and I still have an hour and 15 minute drive through traffic. I hadn't even made it to the end of their driveway yet and there's already a pile of problems that were never mentioned. Top of that list, there's no power steering pump and there's no oil pressure. If that gauge is accurate, there's no way this car is gonna make it to LA. I am so screwed. All right, good news is on the highway, I've got like supposedly 15. The bad news is I just went to adjust the mirror and it fell off. I smell a hefty oil leak. Doesn't even smell like burned oil, it smells like raw oil. I don't know, don't have time. We'll figure it out when we're there. This thing supposedly had brand new tires. They look new. I just think it was 10 years ago and they sat flat. Because holy shit, it 
it is not smooth. Another news, we got 18 PSI, and I forgot to mention, we're like out of gas. It's got no gas in it. We're gonna find a gas station. There's one in two miles, it looks like. Oh boy. A couple miles later, we arrived for our first fill up of the trip. This was also the first time I was going to have to figure out how to navigate a parking lot with no reverse. All right, I gotta find somewhere where I can get gas and get out without having reverse. Or power steering with one hand. Good news is it makes no engine noise, so I don't think that gauge is accurate. I figured at this point we've made it 10 miles, all the bad luck's behind me, but little did I know it was just getting started. I don't know how this thing is at 210 degrees when it's 40 out. Are you kidding me? Son of a bitch. Oh boy, we, we do have an oil leak. Also, I think I figured out why there's no power steering. There's no power steering pump. Wait, where did it go? Mm, that fuel pump looks good too. I might have really outdone myself this time. The guy we got the car from brought me the keys since I was only a couple miles away. That's probably gonna be the most expensive tank of gas I've ever bought. And maybe the most annoying. Oh, you son of a bitch. So we got a Canadian here in California showing me how to use a gas pump because they're not normal. You gotta press them in. Yeah, you gotta press them in with spring loaded. That's so stupid. Once she was full, I hopped in the car, verified that our fuel gauge worked, and then checked to see if we had anything at all in reverse gear. It doesn't even drop in gear. Okay. Oh. Yeah. 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 Why does it sound like there's a power steering pump whine when there's no power steering pump? <laughs> all right, let's get the hell out of here. Wish me luck. Yeah, I might need to put tires on the list if I want to do anything about 63 on the way home. Oh boy. We got a full tank of gas. Currently 18 PSI. If I let off the gas, the diesel goes up to 20. Maybe a little, a little charge up, pressure boost, you know. Charge my special ability. 21 PSI. I need to tape the windows up. They're a little leaky. All right, we got 35 miles left on one of the most stressful rides of my life. As you can maybe see. A bit rough in here. This thing leaks so much oil, it's just raw oil smell the whole time. Not burnt oil, it smells like someone dumped oil on my shirt. The closer I got the donut media, the further it felt away. We were starting to run into the traffic and hills, and the car was not loving it. Oh boy, <laughs> oh god, this is, this is so bad. Anyway, as you can see, we're coming into some good traffic. What I've done to keep the RPM up, keep the oil pressure at least kind of above zero. I've thrown the car down in the second gear. Should give us a little more RPM and help keep that fan moving and keep that oil pump moving. All right, we're off the highway. What happens if I let off the gas? Back on it, back on it. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a rod near Randy's donuts. <laughs> I got nothing left on the gauge, but she's here. <laughs> Against all odds. That thing's pretty rad. Just, it's also huge. It's also no reverse, so I'm just gonna pull up next oh. to everyone and be in the way. <laughs> we'll, okay. push we'll, we'll push you out. <laughs> as soon as I parked, Nolan grabbed an oil pan so we didn't make a mess all over the driveway, which is when he saw this. Oh, Kevin. What do you mean, oh, Kevin? Oh. <laughs> I thought my car was dirty underneath. Hey, you know what? That means there's no rust. <laughs> <laughs> That's factory paint under that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, okay, it's on just that side, right? Yeah. This side's clean. Yeah. Engine rotation is clockwise, I believe. Yep. That means the bottom of our front main is leaking and slinging it all over there. Yeah. Environmental disaster over here. <laughs> is it? It's dripping off the control arm? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Let's invite Kevin out. He can ruin all the concrete. <laughs> it's, it's dripping out of the valve covers, too. Survey says one quart. Sure as shit. He was right. Well. This can sit here for now until we gotta push it out of our way. Yeah. Wanna fix one of your cars? Let's do it. Hell yes. All right, it's the end of day one helping on the unmentioned vehicle that we're working on. Hmm. I, how would they possibly know which car know. it is? I don't know. I found myself in a pickle. We had to move the car at one point and it is now here. Well, we'll push you back. You can use the bring forward. Bring it forward, angle it, and it'll push back again. All the way out onto the road. All the way out. 
Yeah, see, this is fine. I just, I'm gonna one, make two, friends two, every time. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see this being a problematic throughout the week. <laughs> <laughs> big time pro tip, big time YouTubers. Buy a car, make sure it has reverse. Not having reverse, it's very inconvenient. Bad. You made it! Alright, now we take it to the hotel, and then it's the valet's problem, not mine. Yeah. Mm. No dash lights. Fun. One good thing about it being dark out, I can't see the oil pressure gauge, which means I can't be bothered by it. Alright, so I just reached down to see if I could get the high beams to cycle, because I think they're just stuck on. And I noticed the parking brake was in the way. So I pressed it, and it wouldn't move. So I pulled the release lever, and it flipped back up. I'm gonna put the frickin' parking brake on this thing. It wasn't on strong enough to stop the car at all, but it was on enough just to rub a little. The uh, brake pedal feels a lot better now. It feels like a normal brake pedal. On the way back to the hotel, I stopped for some tacos and then took a moment to put some more Lucas in the engine to replenish that missing quart of oil. Good luck, little buddy. Oh, that's thick. <laughs> if that doesn't help, I don't know what will. <laughs> Oh, ho, ho. now instead of zero PSI, I have two. It's salvageable. She's got some nuts. And under load, it makes no noise, which is usually where knocking occurs is under load. So ah, this is either one of those engines that lives for 15 years on zero PSI, or that gauge has something going on with it, where the gauge is wrong or the feed to it is kinked or the engine's too gummed up to properly supply the oil line with the same pressure that the crank is seeing. I, I don't I don't know. A half a mile later, aka 12 minutes, I made it to the hotel and may have gotten a little bit lost. Oh shit! Where's it? Have power! Steering! I don't... Mm, I don't think I took the right turn. Son of a bitch. Oh thank god I can get through. Okay. Oh, not that pedal. Not that pedal. If this is the parking, the <laughs> valets are so screwed. There's no spots you can drive straight through. But then again, that's not quite my problem. As I pulled up to the valet, he walked over to the car and I said, I gotta warn ya, this thing, and he interrupted me saying, let me guess, it's a... Screaming death trap? <laughs> I don't know about the screaming part. The death trap, you For definitely sure. got to. Right. It doesn't have reverse. Wow, interesting. <laughs> Do you have any spots you can pull clean through? No, uh, we have one on the top. I'll just move the cones. That way, I'll just park it head in, okay. and we we'll could get it out head in. But okay. I got okay. this from Palmdale, drove it all the way down miraculously. Wow. So. Okay. And where are you headed to after? Iowa. Oh, you're driving a tile? <laughs> That's gonna take. Oh, all right. I'll just leave it right there I'm for just you. Just gonna leave it there all day? Yeah, just because uh, I don't want to mess with it. I can't, I can't blame you there. Yeah, so, so we're going to leave right there. Um, so tomorrow when you come back down, just... Um, VIP shitbox yep. status. <laughs> yeah, more than VIP. VIP is right here to the right. So <laughs> The next four days in LA were the same tune again and again. Wake up, hop in the car, drive across LA with no oil pressure, buy donuts at Randy's Donuts, go to Donut Media, work all day, leave Donut Media, drive across LA with no oil pressure, go back to the hotel, again and again and again. Eventually it was Friday evening, my work at Donut Media was done, I said goodbye to Nolan. Hey, aren't you that guy from YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> hey, take care man, thanks again. And then drove to the valet one last time. Good morning everyone, and welcome to my last day in LA. My work at Donut Media is done. That video will be out in January. Like I said, it's going to be absolutely awesome. I'm so excited for you guys to see this. And that means that it's time for me to take this car down to San Diego and prep it for the drive all the way back to Iowa. Step one, I actually need to get back out and put some more Lucas in this thing, and then we can hit the road. There you go, little buddy. I honestly can't believe you're still alive at all. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this is impressive. Things starting to run better and better. The odometer leaving the hotel is 135,265. 
At this point, I'm honestly not too scared of this thing. If it survived five days of driving around in LA and stopping at freaking stop signs all the time, and stop lights for 20 minutes with no pressure while it sits there and idles, I think it'll survive a trip to San Diego just fine. Let's find out. All right, here we go. Getting on the old 405. And there's the tire shake. I haven't felt that for a few days. 125 miles, let's do it. With Lucas oil additive in the engine, our oil pressure was holding pretty consistent at about 18 PSI on the highway. And speaking of consistent, my rear tires I'm convinced were squares. Eventually I had a turn, which was a good chance to see if I had any oil pressure at all. Is it on the peg? Is it, it's off the peg. So there's presence of oil. <laughs> I don't know how this is even possible, honestly. This should have died so long ago. All right, this way to San Diego. I've been to Cali twice now, once last year when we worked on Nolan's Imperial, and once this year when, yeah, you'll see. Both times I never really left LA, so this is, this is fun to go out and explore and see what California actually has to offer. And I get a coast all the way down this hill, which means we get a bunch of pressure. Woo! Holy shit, look at that. It's the ocean. What do you mean they got problems with the water out here? There's a whole pile of it right there. About 30 minutes out of San Diego, Google informed me that there's a 30 minute delay in traffic and I was getting low on gas. So I decided to pull off and try a side road. I might have just screwed up. We got off the highway to go around some shit and I think I just drove into Camp Pendleton. Thankfully I do have a military ID. Let's see if this works. And just like that, my extremely expired cat card has got me into Camp Pendleton apparently. Let's go see what a Marine base is about. So I may have added a couple minutes to my overall route, but two things. One, I can get fuel, and two, I can stay moving the whole time. I don't have to sit and stand still traffic for what was looking to be about 25 minutes. That would have been hell. This thing would have overheated, probably got the oil real thin, and died. Here, I'm doing 50 mile an hour. There's some awesome roads. Like, look at this. I guess six years in the Army is finally paying off. Oh, hey, that's a gas station. Your destination is on the right. Way to ruin it. I was going to act like I found it on my own. Thanks, phone. Let's swing this bitch around and get her filled up. Got ourselves a full tank. I think I'm going to go over there and get ourselves some air in the front tires because I never did that. Oh, it's freaking broken. Never mind. Oh, what? What the hell? I am in California, I suppose. All right, well, never mind. Back on the road. After a quick fill up, it was back on the road enjoying the awesome scenic view through Camp Pendleton until I saw a sign that caught my interest. I had to turn around and go check it out. It turns out this was an area for people stationed on base to come rent tools and workspaces and work on their cars. I thought this was a really cool concept. I'd never seen it on any other military base. And of course, I'm going to walk around and check out all the cars, which is where I met this guy. All right, so I wondered if this would happen. I walked up to this guy's car, this is Adam. Hey. And he's like, are you Kevin from Junkyard Digs? I'm like, I am. So what are you doing here, sir? What what do we got? So yeah, 1964 Cadillac, the Series 62. Uh, bought it, it's a California car, bought it up in Fullerton by LA. Rebuilt the engine a couple years ago. Oh yeah. And then now uh, I got air ride suspension sitting in the passenger seat there. Oh. We're more than what the cars were, but you know. <laughs> I know all about that. Well, uh, this is too but, cool. Yeah, well, it makes fun. I think I think you will succeed on your quest of doing that. Well, hey, it was great meeting you. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck to you. Yeah. Well, that was really random and fun. Got to meet a fan and see some cool cars. She flooded a little on me. All right, 40 minutes to Craig's. Back on the road. A shrubbery. Who's that this shrubbery? Look at for sale. They have the shrubberies. I demand a shrubbery. Nee. Man, I'm so jealous of the roads out here. Smooth and nice and curvy and beautiful and fun. I definitely need to come out to Cali and just drive sometime. All right, I don't want to show too much because I don't want to give away uh, Craig's location of his new shop, but uh, we're almost there. I think I'm in the right area. Just maybe. Oh my God, look at that beautiful unit. He would probably help you out reverse if you wanted to yeah, back it in. I was just like, oh, let me let me just spin around right here and pull in because I drove past the door. Come on, Craig, give her hell. Oh, jeez, one horsepower. Look at that, faster this thing will ever go in reverse. At least it rolls easy. 
And now the whole no power steering thing. How are you? I am just Danny, sir. Are nice you ready to, to see you again. Are you ready to change that? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> if you guys haven't recognized this guy yet, this is Craig, the Craig 909 on YouTube. He does a whole bunch of Ford stuff. Also pretty close to LA, a couple hours down here in San Diego. Yeah. And more importantly than all that, he has a shop. <laughs> Upgrades, people! Upgrades. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is all, has this even been no, so yeah, as of right now, no, yeah. So you can see this is like technically my area. That's not even done yet. I don't have a wall yet. So we're still working on my side. But yeah, oh, it's, yeah. Uh, we're getting into a good space. Got my buddy Artin over there. And uh, <laughs> we got a whole little shop space going. It's pretty cool. So. Sweet. I'm not building cars in the, the mud anymore. Which is nice, <laughs> so. That's no fun. Yeah. Man, when I tell you I got in this thing, turned the key and drove it for a week and I haven't touched a bolt. I mean, I haven't touched a bolt. I've been waiting for the phone call like, hey, I'm actually screwed. Um, <laughs> I've been waiting to make the rod. phone call. Yeah. No. It's, somehow <laughs> it's just fine. I I don't understand if they've got something going on with this line. Or there's a kink in it somewhere. Or the gauge maybe went bad. But there's no way this should still be alive. Oh, wow. What in the hell? You yeah, take it a, put a drip pan and you can cover the other side. <laughs> no, we got to cover. Dude, there's more on the control it's arm. the floor is dripping back there. Oh my god. I have never seen that much oil on the <laughs> control arm before. Dude, you you better hope you never have to do like a coil over conversion or are whatever. Are you kidding? It'll be the easiest one I ever have to do. I was going to say all the bolts are already broke loose. <laughs> yeah. That's for damn sure. You could drive straight through a salt storm and this thing, the whole left <laughs> the passenger good. side of the car is good. Dude, look at the tire even. Oh my gosh. The, the, the front main joint. leaks so bad that the brakes pull to the left. <laughs> that I can definitely believe. Wow. <laughs> After a bit of inspection trying to determine exactly what our leak was instead of just loading the parts cannon, we decided we had no idea what the hell we were looking at, so we took the car down to the car wash with a few cans of degreaser. Oh, yeah. There you go. Get the good angles. <laughs> it's in the wheel well. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, look at that. Wow, he really is doing just the whole thing. Oh, yeah. It's... I don't want this shit all over me. Or in your shop and any of that. After a good rinse down, the engine bay was looking better than ever, and it was time to head back to the shop. All right, let's see if this sucker starts. <laughs> I wonder which ignition component got wet. All of it. Huh? I was gonna say maybe just pump it 300 times. Yeah, I think your your coil ain't doing anything. If I can film this without shocking the crap out of myself. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, it's got spark. Like that. Okay. That's weird. Uh -huh. That doesn't make any sense. Is our cap wet? I was gonna say, you wanna pop the cap off? It's got spark out the coil. Mm -hmm. oh, there's definitely oh, some water yep, in there. Oh, there it is. There's, yeah. there's moisture up there. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so where'd that rag go? You mean the one that's in my hand? Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, there you go. Just blow on it. <laughs> like you. Oh, that's it. Look at Cheech, look at that. Oh, she's mad. What a sweetheart. Do you watch the oil pressure jump up there? Go like eight. <laughs> eight pounds and it rose like perfectly. Yeah, it makes no noise up here. It used to have lifter tick and it's gone. There's no, there's no physical way those lifters are less than eight pounds. No. They would rattle like crazy. Oh shit, there's a Jeep there. Oh, I gotta push you now, damn it. Craig, go! <laughs> <laughs> Having no reverse isn't that bad. You just need friends. Yeah, what's good about this reverse is it always works. <laughs> you want me to honestly, help you turn it? Honestly, having no reverse hasn't been that big of a hindrance to me. Yeah. Well, around me? I was gonna say, especially when you're not the one getting out. 
All right, let's get this back to the shop, see if we can identify a leak, see if we can figure out our pressure ordeal. Yeah. And get her fixed. Yes, sir. Oh, that right there is an active drip, and it is under the front main. Now that we knew where the leak was from, we threw on a new oil pressure gauge, hoping that this one would magically read way higher. To say the least, I was still very nervous about driving this car 1,800 miles home. So he's going to start it, and I'm going to tell you that it makes 45 pounds of oil pressure. <laughs> Good. And then we're going to shut the hood, and we're going to go on with our day. <laughs> Even after cracking the fitting at the gauge to release any pressure built up by air in the line, the oil took so long to move up the hose the camera's SD card got full, I had time to take it from Craig, delete some files, turn it back on and hand it to him, and easily catch the last foot of line. Okay, it's not the issue. I think you need an oil pump. It has nothing to do with bearings at this point. You don't think so? Right. How is that possible? Yeah, listen to it. And it's perfectly quiet. There's a little lifter down. Stranded in the middle of New Mexico, 600 miles from a parts store. Probably. Probably. That's fine. Yeah, if it wasn't like, you know, drive through Arizona, New Mexico, I'd be a little less concerned about this, but yeah. it is, so. Yeah. That's right, future Kevin's problem. It happens to be that I'm also future Kevin. I know who gets to play that role. <laughs> <sighs> I can't, I just can't have nice things. Uh, oops. We stood around and stressed about rebuilding the engine for a little bit before deciding that the best course of action for right now was to just go ahead and clean out the back of the car. All right, what's the status, Craig? Dude, I'm looking at the box back here. I noticed immediately the box in the corner, and I was like, dude, that's a carpet kit, because I could tell just by the logo, because I've gotten those carpet kits before. And then I'm like, I'm like, open the box, and I'm like, yeah, that might uh, explain some things, you know, because you know, nobody just carries around. Like, uh, was that two gallons worth of 2050? It's already 2050. Yeah. Yo, we got some valve covers. Oh, dude, those are nice. Oh, nice. Whoa. Electric jack. Electric scissor jack. That's Never fancy. We just found a bag full of Crocs in the car. These look like something your dad. These are kind of nice. All the Californians like immediately just lost their shit. No, that's this one. Dude, this man saw the Crocs that's and his face lit up like it was the most amazing so thing. Pull another pair out. Let's yeah. see what he thinks of those. Ah, I want them. Ah, we got more. Dude, with your these wagon. are like, look at these. Dude, those are sick. God, that, oh, shit. With leather. Oh, Stitching. Strapped. Do you have a pair? Oh, Do you have a pair? Name pair. Oh. <laughs> Damn, dude. Oh, man. He's putting them on immediately. <laughs> I'm about to see how fast I am in these things. You got I'd say they work pretty well. Yeah, all right. I'm glad that the Crocs went to a good home. I thought they were going straight in the trash. <laughs> Thank you for the Crocs. You're welcome. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So, Merced, four hours north of here in the middle of the valley. <laughs> and I don't know what Razer, Razai. Hey, you know foreign words. What's this? Merced? Merced? The bottom part. I know. Razai? Razai. Is that an H? That's an R. Razari. 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 Was this the original California car? I'm assuming. Because that would be. That wouldn't seen. surprise me. These are the actual dealer plates from Merced where it was like sold. It does have the flip up back seat! Is it present? Is it here? You gotta. Oh, we get, okay. my God. We gotta clean this out. We gotta see that. What? Oh, I thought it was seats. It's like Trump storage space. Dude, your AC compressor! <laughs> There he is. It's like all taped up too. <laughs> oh, that's the air cleaner. air cleaner. Cool, that's there, but dang it, I was kind of hoping to see seats. Yeah, that would have been nice. So does that seat fold flat and I have a truck bed? And then technically... Yeah, it lays down like a Mustang. Oh, shit, yeah, all the way to the front seat. I could haul lumber in this thing. <laughs> oh, this is muy fragile. Oh my god. She is... Donezo. Holy crap. At that point, our brains were pretty much done for the day, so we called in a night to get an early start the next morning.
Good morning, everyone. It is the next day. We're gonna hit it hard today, finish up everything on this car, so by tomorrow morning, I'm on the road. Step one, as you can see, I've got the dash torn apart. I've been trying to get the gauge cluster lights to work, and I have had no success whatsoever. So at this point, I am completely over that, and we're going on to plan B for the lights, which is this right here. <laughs> it sounds dumb, but it'll work. Oh, also, fun fact, you ever buy one of these, you get a lifetime supply of these little <laughs> cell batteries. Holy crap. Suddenly, maybe this thing doesn't hate me so much. I was able to get the rheostat to work, which means I can crank that way down. Shove it in the bottom right there. I put my faceplate back on. You can see it makes a good difference. I actually did this in the Le Mans. I took some AutoZone, little stick on like under dash lights and stuck one to each gauge. It's way easier than trying to get everything on the backside to work. All right, so it's been a little bit and we have some progress made. First of all, I got rid of the tint strip that ran across the whole top. So now I can see out of my windshield. And second of all, the dash is back together with, ta-da, working dash lights. And I wired up the lights in our oil pressure and water gauge. I also found a loose vacuum line and hooked it up that runs a blend door of some sort. So maybe our HVAC will not just be stuck on the frost, but probably not. We'll see. All right, fast forward in time. I have all the pulleys off. Time to get this harmonic out here. It's a little tricky to get out despite being such a big car. It's kind of a tight engine bay. Yeah. There's so. like a like catch your catch your nail groove right there from riding on rubber. Maybe this is a 235,000 mile car. <laughs> I can't wait to get my phone down there and see what that looks like with a flashlight. Sick. All right, moment of truth. Wait, is there even a seal? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, wait, did these go in from the back? Did I screw up? Did these seals go in from the front or the rear? Uh, I swear it's the front. It should be the front. After seeing we would have to take the entire timing cover off, we decided to start with the valve covers just to see if this was worth doing or if, like we suspected, this engine might be completely gummed up with crap and it's not even worth messing with. Do you think this is 135 or 235? This side? 397,400. Oh, <laughs> Holy jeebus. There's so much stuff that there's an active puddle of oil that didn't drain. Oh. That is, that's pretty thick. Dude. Look at that. It's like solid. It doesn't I even... I think I know why there's no oil pressure. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's that not, has... probably out of pump. Whoa, oh. look at that. Look at that. Oh. Wait, it, oh. it gets better. There's more. Look at that. Is there? If I can put my hand in there. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Drop it outside of the motor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, look. Yeah, look at your oil drains plugged right there in the corner. Is it really? Yeah, look. Here, I'll unplug it for you like a toilet plunger. Oh. <laughs> Get a drill. Oh a, yeah, dude. Oh. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I don't think you ever changed it at all. They never gave me an answer. Wasn't it the one of those uh, just add oil <laughs> kind yes. of cars? Yes, it was. It was an add oil car. So this was an add oil car for a long time. And that's what you get. Let's see what the PCV side looks like. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> oh my that's Lanta. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> what? It's a pile. Look there is that. a pile of bullshit right there. Is that the seal? I don't know if that's the, is that the valve cover gasket? It looks like the gasket. Yeah, that's the gasket. Okay, that's. Wait, that's like an old gasket though. But the gasket's still there. Dude, <laughs> oh, I have never seen one that bad. These drains are just completely clogged, dude. <laughs> that is the dirtiest motor wow. I've ever seen. Look at that. I don't want to go through all this shit to take off a valve cover and do all that work for an engine just going straight in the scrap pile. If the valve cover looks like that, your timing chain looks even better. I don't want to know. <laughs> kind of the position where I would just say, leave the undercoating for the snow and just keep putting oil in it. All right, let's vacuum out the freaking valve train, put this thing back together, Pretend. find some tires tomorrow morning and get me the hell out of here because there are snowstorms on the rise. I think it'll be fine. Got to get the corn in. The snow is on the horizon. Oh no. Man, you guys got some interesting stuff that pulls up this shop here. <laughs> what is this? So, this is a Mini Moke. A Mini Moke? Mini Moke. <laughs> it's, a, it's the same as the, the early classic Minis, but I different say, That looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> For as light as it is, it, it moves pretty good. That is uh, hilarious. Right hand drive? I was going to say, right you're right hand drive four yeah. speed? I've yeah. never driven a right hand drive anything. Oh, this is going to be colorful. Can we take this for a rip? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my god. 
Take it the other way again. Like a, like a latex gloves at three sizes too small, huh? <laughs> Look at my feet. This is ridiculous. Like, Whatever gear you're in, you ain't going any further over. Let's see, see here's the inside. problem with me and other people. Yeah. Is all of my height is in my legs. And this is every time I try to drive something small. It's just knees, steering wheel. Everything up here is fine. We're going to be best friends. We're shoulder to shoulder and there's a harness in my butt crack. This feels really yeah, great. Yeah. Oh, God. Is that she, reverse? She's got pep in her step. No. How do I hey, how do I do this with the clutch? Uh, foot back. You got you got to like put your heel way back. Left leg kind of up like, a little bit. Like up here? Oh no no no. Oh, oh heel like right there. there. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's reverse. Wait a second. Yeah, that's got to be reverse. Yeah. Ow. Yep. <laughs> Best case scenario, we get T-bone, so I don't have to get out of this. I'm dead before that. Ah, true. That knee to steering wheel ratio is pretty dang. It's a little, little ripper. Yeah, dude. Oh god. Yeah. Ripper. It's like a super long, it's like a truck throw. Yeah. The shifting. <laughs> Dude, this would be an autocross machine. Dude, honestly. Whoa. There's the second. Nice. This is fun. I don't think I can press the clutch down all the way. Yeah, that's. That does, I think I can touch the ground. <laughs> This is something, huh? This is, I don't know what. Did it, they hit the cop chases, we just take a sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, literally. They're not gonna get it's it. a golf cart, I promise. I so. Damn, you're grabbing gears or something. You're driven right hand drive. That's pretty good. Yeah, this is the same, but backwards. Yeah, yes. <laughs> same, but different. We should go down there. Oh, that would be some Ken Block stuff, wouldn't it? <laughs> the thing I keep screwing up is I go for the blinker and it's on the other side. Yeah, that's the, the, the British. It's on the other side. Everything's flipped. It's on the right, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I get those turn signals. Right down! Dude, we should put it in the Carvana betting machine. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> that fit that, Bill. Oh, oh, there we go. I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Bump smoke on. Oh, that's pretty fun. Also, not windy in here. No, it's like surprising. I was like, dude, we're gonna freeze, but it's worth it. Too bad. And I'm totally comfortable. Yeah, not bad. I'll take this. Yeah. After playing around for a bit with the moke, we went back to work, resealed our valve covers, reinstalled our harmonic balancer, and finished things up for the night with the car ready for a trip to the tire store first thing tomorrow morning. Not a drop! <laughs> Alrighty, good morning folks. Today is... One... Where's Tuesday? Back with The bar is closed back home? Monday. Monday, December 19th at that, which means that this hopefully doesn't turn into an episode of trains, planes, and automobiles, but I do have to get this thing all the way home in time for Christmas at this point. This morning, I'm going to head down to a local speed shop, check that thing out, and get some tires while I'm there. On the road again? All right, we got 23 miles to the speed shop. And with that, I confidently hit the highway on this beautiful California morning, sure that nothing could go wrong in only 23 miles. Son of a... Bitch! God damn it! Well, let that be a lesson to always check your hood latch. Thankfully, it didn't hit the cowl, fenders, roof, windshield, just the hood. Even the hinges survived. That sucks though, but I'll be able to find a hood. All right, here we are, rolling into town. Zero PSI, as is tradition. It's gonna be the most stressful drive home ever, and now we don't even have a super straight car to bring home. That's, it needs a hood. <laughs> I should have just flown back. All right, we're here. Let's get some tires on this thing. While the guys down at JBA worked on switching out the tires on the wagon, I decided to start poking around at some of the awesome cars they had sitting in the back. These guys were clearly big Ford fans and had some awesome Fords sitting back there, as well as a couple of oddballs such as this Cutlass. Up front, they had an incredible display of aftermarket parts. It seems like they had one of everything to include some of the weirdest 302 intakes I've ever seen. Huge thanks to the guys down at JBA and Meltdown Tires for hooking us up with a used set of Mickeys and no time at all, they were on the car and I was ready to hit the road. You know what comes next? Start pushing. <laughs> oh, damn, that's why you brought me down here. <laughs> go, Craig, go. Here we go. Well, that's that, I guess. Yeah. We didn't really fix much. We put chrome on it. We put chrome on and it. Chrome will get you home, right? I pray to God. Yeah. Craig, thank you for your help. Anytime, brother. Everyone check out his channel, The Craig 909 yes, right sir. here on YouTube.
I just got a shop. We're going to be doing fun stuff now. Yeah, he is. Even better. Oh, um, hell. Safe travels, buddy. Thank you much, sir. I'll see you on the other side. Let's do it. All right, well, that's it. We've got tires, and that's the last piece we need before we drive home. And with that being said, we finally start our 1,800-mile journey home. Head northwest toward Kearney Villa Road. Oh, it doesn't even give me hours. It starts with a day. <laughs> this is going to be rough. Let's get it done. Seems smoother. So we're starting shaking. Let's see. It's 65, and it's dead smooth. Hell yes. Thank you, JBA Speed Shop. You guys are awesome, you did a great job. And with that, I cranked up the tunes, put the pedal down, and started heading east. Our temps were good, our oil pressure was, well, pressure, and it seems like we were gonna be okay for a little bit. Keywords there were a little bit. It wasn't a couple minutes later until I ran into some hills and we started getting warm and losing pressure. Thankfully, I had some beautiful views to distract me from the lack of oil pressure the car was making. I definitely wanna come out here again with a good car and drive all these roads someday. Once I was out of the hills, the temp came down and our pressure came back. There's our first hour done on the drive home. The pressure's kind of been all over the place. Still driving smooth as hell, a lot better with some air in the rear shocks. Wow, 6%, next seven miles. Oh shit, that's traffic. Stopped traffic? Oh, I'm so screwed. I don't have the oil pressure for this. Ah! Well, good thing this is a comfortable car. Wake me up when I'm home. A couple minutes later, we started moving just as sudden as we had stopped. 2,000 foot elevation, moving once again. 100 miles out of San Diego, I found myself traveling through an agricultural river basin and decided it was probably time to stop to check the oil and get some gas. And do this without reverse once again. Yep. Bumper. <laughs> All right, let's fill her up. She was a quart low in 100 miles. So every 100 miles, we gotta throw another quart in her, so. Good luck in there. See you in 100 miles. Back on the road. Get some RPM in it so we can get some pressure going. As you can see, there's none. All right. How far do we have to go, phone lady? You on I-8 East for 171 miles. Oh, that's a number of miles. As I made my way out of the river basin and towards some sand dunes, I saw a large dark object on the horizon south of me. It took me a moment, but then I realized what I was looking at. That is the border wall between Mexico and America. I've never seen that before. I also found some massive sand dunes that look super fun to go ride on. They're everywhere. It's like Silver Lake, but giant. After marveling at those, I continued on to Yuma, Arizona. Welcome to Arizona. Yes. Welcome to Arizona. Yeah, I got that already. From Yuma, I continued east through Arizona towards Phoenix. I drove past some signs with some rather questionable phrasing, drove through more beautiful curvy mountain passes, and of course upset our oil pressure once again. But this time it was different. This time it wasn't coming back. I noticed my oil pressure is kind of dipped, not returned, and it kind of sounds like I hear some bottom end noise. Yeah, even on full diesel. I'm not getting any pressure back. A couple miles later, the rattles in the engine were getting so bad, I had to pull off and check it out. Well, she ain't knocking down low still, so... I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know. At this point, I figured this thing was done for, so I started looking for options. It was over $2,500 to rent a U-Haul, plus the cost of the trailer that this car wouldn't fit on to haul it all the way back to Iowa, or two grand to ship it home, plus an $800 plane ticket to get my ass home. Believe it or not, I hated both of those options because of the price tag, and I wasn't sure what to do. What I was sure of, however, was that I had family in Phoenix an hour and a half down the road, and a half a gallon of Lucas additive left. We might make it to Phoenix, there's no way in hell it makes it home. I need to keep moving while the sun's still out for the next like four minutes so that when this thing blows up on the side of the road, I at least made it most of the way in the daylight. 116 miles, my God. This is gonna be painful to watch. What? I don't believe that for a second, but we'll see what happens. A couple miles and it's still alive and like healthier than ever. I I do not understand what's happening right now. I was sure that motor was about to throw a rod in the next three miles. And now it's better? What? What the hell? 
our special ability recharge where I let off the gas and the oil pressure comes back as returned. What, what did I just, was I low on oil? Maybe I don't need to go to Phoenix. Maybe I keep driving home. I don't know. Uh -huh. As I approached 260 miles since San Diego, our oil pressure was seemingly still holding good. With that, the sun started to set and I continued towards Phoenix, Arizona. All right, I think we're getting close to the Phoenix area. The sky is brighter over there. We've done over 300 miles now. Our oil pressure is the most consistent it's been since I literally bought the car. So I don't know what that was about. The engine temp is cooler because it's going off outside. So that will help. We'll keep her going. I'm going to stop at our Riley's and get some more motor honey. And probably an energy drink and then we'll get back on the road. And there it is. I'm gonna run in and get some goo. We'll get back on the road. All right, we got another quart of 2050 and started our second jug out of three that I now have. We have 22 hours and 22 minutes remaining. And I think he goes out to the kid who worked at O'Reilly's who recognized me and said he's watched our channel for a long time. You rock. All right, let's get back on the road. After O'Reilly's, I stopped for fuel. Oh my gosh, finally normal gas nozzles. And then saw some troubling news on my phone. Yes, the rumors are true. This is gonna be the coldest Christmas in decades for millions of people across the US. Some of the coldest air on the entire planet from around Siberia has slipped through the jet stream and it's currently falling across Canada and headed right towards the central and eastern US. And this is gonna bring wind chills to 50 to 60 degrees below zero in portions of Nebraska. That's where I'm driving. Yeah, this is why I'm racing home. I need to beat that, and it's supposed to be here Wednesday. It's either 7 or 8 p.m. I don't know what time zone I'm in on the 19th right now, which gives me two days to get home. I'd like to make it somewhere near Albuquerque tonight. That's still seven and a half hours from where I am in the same town the O'Reilly's is in. Have I even made it to Phoenix yet? Holy shit. Okay. No, I'm driving. I'll talk to you later. From there, I put the hammer down and made it through Phoenix towards Albuquerque. Right, all right, all right. It's been a little while longer, and we are looking at, you can't see it unless I hit this button. Huzzah! We are at 400 miles for today. That's pretty good. A couple hundred more would be awesome. We'll see. It is getting a little cold in here, so I should stop and find some tape for these windows at the next oil fill-up. It's been 50 miles. Finally found a spot to pull off and check our oil, and we were two quarts low, so... <laughs> Two more quarts in there. In the meantime, it is cold outside now, and I gotta get this heater working better, because, yeah, it's stuck on the frost, but it's not really moving any heat. It's just like the presence of blowing air. And I'm getting a little cold inside. That's proof. Add those to the collection. Both of my heater core hoses are hot, which means I'm getting heat. It's either this blend door or this little doodad. It's probably not this guy, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's this blend door, so let me see if I can find some to tie him open, I think. Flop, classic window, you know how he be. Oh, dude, perfect. There's strength. <laughs> All right, got that blend door tied open. Let's see if that makes a difference. The biggest difference would be getting this damn window to close. It just keeps falling open. <laughs> hmm. I wanna say it's a little warmer. I really don't know. Whatever, all right, back on the road. From there, I continued north through the Tonto National Forest and towards the Sitgreaves National Forest. If you've never driven this route through Arizona, just know it's very weird because it goes from deserts to northern Minnesota in like 40 miles. That is snow piled up against the road. Oh shit. I guess the good news about seeing snow is that if I break down, I can build an igloo and live in that. All right, I've been climbing this hill for what seems like an eternity. It's been at least 10 minutes and it shows. I don't know if you can see it, but oh, our pressure's down to like three. I pray to God there's a downhill soon. And I need to stop and put more Lucas in it ready. Holy cow. Well, I'll tell you what, kids. I sure am cold and stupid. Cold and stupid, I've decided. This is a stupid idea, and it's cold. Eventually the hills stopped as I approached the deserts of New Mexico. As the outside temperatures started to get colder and colder, our engine temperatures finally mellowed out being on level ground and we regained some oil pressure. Somewhere around 1am I found myself in the petrified national forest and decided I was just too cold and too tired and it was time to stop. Good job you crazy tired son of a bitch. Good job. 
Good morning, everyone. Today I'm wearing two sweatshirts and my pajama pants under my normal pants. Priority one today is fix the heater. Priority two is drive home as fast as we can as I'd like to make it to Kansas City by this evening, which is 15 hours away. And that's 15 hours of non-stop driving, which this car can't do. It can do, you know, an hour and a half of driving, and then I gotta put oil in it. And that shit adds up. Come on, you son of a bitch. It's 6 a.m. I don't have time for your shit right now. By the way, it is 16 degrees out this morning. Are you shitting me? <laughs> Just lights off like that? It's 16 degrees. Let's go to the gas station and find some tape and zip ties. Alrighty, we've got gas in the tank. We've got oil in the other tank. I put tape on the window. It's probably gonna fly off immediately since duct tape doesn't stick when it's frozen. But <laughs> it makes me feel better. I also took that piece of string and took it off the air dam door thing that I put it on before. And I moved it to the uh, inline valve and tried to tie that thing all the way open. Really hoping it works because I would love to warm up at some point today. Come on, little car, I believe you. Six miles. We only got exactly 1,201 miles left to go. Let's do it. All right, it's, I don't know if I'd say heat, but it ain't cold. This is a big help. I don't have a draft on me. It, it was literally windy all the way here last night in 21 degrees with that i hopped on route 191 and continued on for the next 357 miles welcome to new mexico it's gonna get really boring for the next six to eight hours despite my best efforts with the heater it was clear it was not working and this was going to be a pretty cold drive home i can't feel my toes after what seemed like eons, the sun finally came out and warmed up the interior of the car, just in time for me to have to pull off and add oil. Oh, she's making a bit of noise again. I'm not really picking up pressure on diesel. I think, I think what this was, was I was running out of oil, so let's pull off and put some more in it. Note to self, take the Lucas into the hotel with you tonight. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen more accurate advertising then extends engine life and keep that engine alive because that is exactly what this stuff is doing we were three quarts low i think she was starting to suck on some shit in the bottom of the pan or run out of oil entirely because it wasn't able to drain back fast enough put a bunch of that in two quarts of 2050 let's see how far we make it this time and let's get some rpm in her now if i let off the gas hey it climbs all right so I guess that's just the second time on this trip that I've ran out of oil in the motor. <laughs> so add two instances of oil starvation to this on top of the fact that it drives around with 18 PSI. And this is honestly incredible that this engine is still alive. As I leaked my way across New Mexico, I became more comfortable with the car and put on some speed. I went down a good hill back there and I've been you know, pushing this thing pretty good today and I finally found where it likes to cruise. I found that my timing advance comes in around 75 mile an hour. There's a spot where the car labors less and seems to actually enjoy going this speed versus lower speeds. And that's because my timing advance is finally coming in. Core ignition systems are pretty lazy and they come in pretty late. I'm probably doing like 2800 RPM. I already threw a half a tank today and approaching what I believe will be, let's see, 800 miles? Hell yeah. There it is. She is making a little engine noise, a little rattly tappy tap tap from the top half. Or at least I'm telling myself it's the top half. Recently, my solution for that has been turn the music up a little bit and just focus on that mileage number going down. Because even if she does pop, the closer the home, the cheaper it is to get it the rest of the way there. She's got fuel. She's got the back half of that jug in there. The dipstick, when I pulled it out to check it, it looked like it was just pure Lucas. It like did that long stringy thing. So 36, 234 on a full tank. The next gas stop, I'm gonna do some math and see what our mileage is. Still doing just fine. John from Golden Ruster Bus just sent me a snap saying, I don't understand how that's alive. That thing has got two feet in the grave and a gun to its head. Being the one driving the car, it's more like it's up to its knees in the grave, two rounds to the head, but it's too high on meth to die. <laughs> so the question I should be asking you guys is, what do we do with the wagon? I want mine redoing the interior, 
getting a hood. If anyone has a really clean hood, by the way, especially in Iowa, please let me know. But yeah, I'd like to redo the exterior, interior, obviously driveline, and have just a beautiful cruiser for power to her. And the other question, of course, is what do we do with the engine if it makes it all the way home? Besides, of course, the trash can. I think we'd take it apart and inspect it and see how bad it really is, because this is, this thing is an anomaly. Freaking 351 Windsors, I tell you, what a motor. Finally, 357 miles later, I am getting off this road. Take exit 339, then turn left onto State Route 88. All right, let's see what's this way. Well, never mind. Freaking Google keeps changing my route to go through Wichita. I don't want to go through Wichita. I want to stay down south where it's warm until I have to go up there. Damn it, Google. Figure Next left onto Key County right. Road 64. It's not a road! Google, I swear, if you just sent me down someone's driveway without reverse. Oh, shit. I might be able to whip around right here. Mm, I don't know. Please tell me this does go through. Oh, it, it does, question mark? We found a faster route via oh, US 54 thanks. East and I 35 North, which saves 30 minutes. Sorry, I'm turning around in your yard. Just disregard this ever happened. And I'm out of here. Screw you, Google. And of course, it's changing it again. I'm not going that way. It's cold. No! We found stop. a faster route no. via US 54. Stop changing it! I'm not going through Nebraska! Let's see if we get this right. I'm gonna get on, it's gonna tell me to do a U-turn and get back off and drive to Nebraska, which I refuse to do. In 1,000 feet, merge onto I-40 East. Oh, gotta figure it out this time, huh? Yep, a little higher RPM flatter, come on, third gear, and we're back into it. Continue on I-40 East for 112 miles. That's not, that, that's pretty far. Yeah, I should have known that 357 was too short. Dude, no, no, You found a faster no. route. Stop it! All right, we approach a thousand miles right now. We started around 415, and there's 414 right there. Oil pressure's down a little bit again. It's not really wanting to do the whole rise when I let go of the throttle thing. So if there's an exit coming off, I'm gonna pull off, throw some more Lucas in it, keep trucking. 417 minus 234, 183 miles divided by 11.4. We're in 16 miles a gallon on this thing. I'll take that. I mean, the oil usage is offsetting any gas savings we're having, but <laughs> that's part of it. There's that tank. Now we fill that tank. She's oiling it down pretty good. It's crazy to think I'm dumping this in and it's coming out that color as fast as it's going in. Okay, we got gas, we got oil. I got something to drink. He took a pee. Something tells me we're not gonna make Kansas City tonight. Something being math so i'm gonna shoot for joplin that puts me within like six hours of home and the snow starts tomorrow around two if i go farther than joplin awesome if i don't i'm probably gonna want to be dead by then anyway because it's still 561 miles away it's eight hours eight hours i've been driving for like i left before seven and it's almost two what did seven hours go how did i make it five hours and seven old cars man there's a time warp around them it takes you three times longer to do anything all right, let's get this show on the road. From that point, I put down the throttle and the camera to make up some time. A couple hundred miles later, I crossed into Texas and I stopped to refill the oil and mess with the heater valve again. Hey, wait a minute. There's a freaking hole in the air box. All right, get the tape. Still haven't been able to find zip ties all day, but I found a rubber band and that duct tape from earlier. I, maybe wind goes this way and in. There's the blower motor's way over here. I don't know if this is supposed to be open or closed. This one never... Well, now he's like half and half. <laughs> I don't know anything. Not great. We go to the floor. High low. The cable moves. I took the thing out to check and everything moves just fine, but it just stalls. Eventually I gave up on the HVAC and hit the road once again as the sun started to set. One thing I found interesting about this car, despite it essentially being a 1970 Galaxy, is the fact that there was very little information for these online. I don't know if these are uncommon and no one owns them or what, but I could never find a wiring diagram, any information on the HVAC, pretty much nothing. Either way, I soldiered eastward through the night into Oklahoma. We've done 1,300 miles and a little more. 250 miles left to Joplin. I'm just cold and tired, so I'm just having to just 
get this done. This sucks. Holy shit, a Casey's. Oh, I haven't seen one of those in a week. It was good to be, well, I'm nowhere near home, but you know, in the middle of the country. Burger King is better than McDonald's by like 67 miles, and I will fight someone about that. After warming up in the Burger King during supper, I got back in the cold car and headed towards Joplin. Oh man, I really thought I could make it to Joplin without doing oil again, but I had to stop at a toll booth and the pressure didn't come back up, so she's empty. Get the bucket out! After finishing off the third bottle of Lucas, I hit the road once again and finally crossed into Missouri. Three more miles and I gotta go to bed. I'm so excited. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the outskirts of Joplin, Missouri. Where there's a hotel right next to a gas station, and that's where I'm going because they've got a lot of parking where you don't need rivers. And then I can just get up in the morning, fill this bitch up with oil and gas, and hit the road to try to beat this snowstorm. We are at uh, 136,989 miles, which, let me do math, I think that's 1,500 miles. It is. So that being said, I'm just gonna park this, shut it off, get a hotel room, and we'll see you guys in like five hours. Starting this afternoon, there's an expectation that there will be delays from this storm starting to show up potentially in the Denver area. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final day. This is it. This is for all the marbles. I've already got the Lucas in the car. I'm gonna go gas up and we're gonna hammer down and get this thing home. It's currently about 7 a.m. and I wanna be home by two because that's when the whiteout blizzard conditions start up north. Right now, not bad, 27 degrees outside, totally manageable. As soon as I hit the Iowa border, single digits and it's only getting worse. So I'm gonna fill this son of a bitch up and let's get out of here. Also, look at that oil smell. <laughs> you can tell where it was blowing in the wind. Holy shit. Eating life, but refusing to die. All right, I got her overfilled on oil. We've got 388 miles to go, which means I'll have to fill up for oil and gas once again. But for now, we're full on gas. Odometer's currently at 36,990 after driving all night. Let's get the hell out of here. On the road again. I can't wait to soon be freezing. As I'm headed home as a frigid, I win. I can't wait to be on the road again. Better route available. What? No, we're not doing this again. I am not going through Nebraska. As the odometer rolled over 37,000 miles, I finally turned north. 130 miles. Let's go. Oh shit! It's the first sighting. <laughs> Y'all know the tradition at this point. You get a little schmutz on you there. Get that for you. It's worse now. All right, I'm pulling up to a farm and home store. Uh, it is freaking cold out, and it's getting colder. And I'm to the point that I'm sick of it. And beyond that, it's going to be downright dangerous when I get to Iowa if something were to happen, like I went into a ditch and whatnot. I, I won't have the ability to sit in my warm car until help got there. I'd be freezing the whole time. So I'm going to run inside and find a solution. And some clothes. Probably some clothes, too. All right, well, that was one of the coolest farm stores I've ever been to. They had everything, and I mean everything. And a lot of it was on sale, so that was good. Got myself a hat, coat, some gloves, and of course, a solution. Unfortunately, <laughs> I should have seen this coming. Apparently there's a shortage on propane and I can't find a damn tank. Let's see if I can find some on the road. Let's get moving. I'm slowly turning into homeless Dave from Roadkill. The only thing I need is a blanket, which I also got. <laughs> Picking up a car from California, I understand the original Roadkill videos so much more now. They were always overheating because their cooling systems are junk because no one runs coolant. They're always freezing because the door seals and everything are gone and the heater cores don't work. And they would drive for weeks on end to get to any events because they were on the opposite coast of so much stuff. This trip has been like being in one of the original 25 episodes of Roadkill. It's been an experience. I'm ready to go home. Also, I think this is a youth hat because it's squeezing my head way too tight. After a quick stop at Menards in Kansas City, I grabbed some propane and then filled up with gas and oil once again before hitting the road. Every last drop of Lucas I have in it, and I think another quarter or two of 2050 as well. Oh, I could still use a little more, are you kidding? I put in like four quarts. This is it, this is the last jug. I'm not buying more 2050. Yes, yes, I 
finally have heat in the car. <laughs> uh, don't do this at home, kids. All right, three hours and 40 minutes home. Let's get it done. This is instantly so much better in here. <laughs> the bed sides. Oh my God. There it is. Interstate 35. Stay on this for 190 miles and we're finally home. Ah, uh, yes. The Mook exit. As I approached the Iowa border 100 miles south of Des Moines, our temperatures and pressures were looking great. I had the heater roll in. The door seals were so rotten, they supplied plenty of fresh air. And it was finally starting to feel like I was going to pull this off. 31 miles into Iowa. I was really hoping that it would last and I could make it all the way home without having to get out because it's cold as shit outside. But nope. We're down to like two quarts or whatever in the pan, so I gotta stop and fill her up. Damn it. Had I known oil consumption was going to get this bad, <laughs> Jesus, I probably would have uh, taken a little more time in California and fixed that front main. Not gonna lie. That is all I have left, is three quarts. So let's just dump that in and get out of here. Also, look, while we're here, just check out how much oil this engine has slung. Like, it is unfathomable. Wait for it. Yeah, let's look at the ground. This has been here for four minutes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's worse than when I got it. It's all wet now. It is insane. There's oil in the rear tire. How does that happen? <laughs> look at the trunk. Like, look at the back. <laughs> it's just oil, the whole thing. It's supposed to be white, like the roof. Those are supposed to be the same color. All right, there we go. That's the last jug. Into the pile. That is obscene. You can't even see the single quartz anymore. All right, let's go home. As you can see, we're seeing the first snow of the entire trip besides the mountains back in Arizona, which is a wild sentence. And for once, I'm not worried about driving a classic from the south in the salt. This son of bitch is so well undercoated, it will never rust in its life. <laughs> it is just oil under the whole car. So we're good. Got about eh, 60 miles left. Let's put the hammer down one last time, listen to that valve train hammer away, and get home. I'm so excited. There it is, the last section of interstate. Oh boy. It's been like 1960 miles somehow. I, I don't know how that happened. But regardless, we're here. This is it. This is the exit. I'm not going to show you people because you're weird and someone will show up to my house. But just know, I'm getting off the interstate finally. Whee! A little bit of back road left, and I'll be home. Also not going to show you that. all the way from California, now I'm ready to drive right back to town. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna park this so I can go inside. Okay. Okay. What the heck is that? Oh, my God. gentlemen there you have it that is the story of the road trip all the way home from California in a car I bought sight unseen and then battled all the way across the country and made it home we did well over our initial 1800 miles I don't know the number off the top of my head here it is up here we battled wind cold heat we had a little bit of everything in this video how much oil do you think we used all of it Five. Nine, 13, now 17, 20, 26, 
Well, there you go, folks. It takes 36 quarts of oil, heavy oil, to drive from San Diego to Central Iowa with a front main leak that we honestly should have fixed in San Diego. Thank you to Craig for all his help for a couple days. We'll see you guys next time for another episode of Junkyard Dish. Peace. I'm going inside, and no one can get me outside for two days.